Barbecue chicken, I'll give you barbecue chicken fried. <laughs> Love my wife so much. Eh? I still make God rest of so in peace. I still love you. I still, I still love you. I don't pray for 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 you. Do that 
to me.
Bonne The tribute I'm about to do is on behalf of IG's first daughter, who unfortunately couldn't be here with us today. Missing you, Dad. You never said goodbye. You were gone before we knew it. My heart still aches in sadness. My tears are still flowing. IG, for what it means to lose you, no one will ever know. IG, you are here, you are not here with me. Never get to meet my son, your grandson, Kyrie. My heart aches. IG, I never I could never be strong enough to accept that you are no longer here. Dad, you left us too soon. We need you here. Things will never be the same without you. Dad, you showed me so much love. You taught me so much. Not a day goes by that I don't think about you. I feel lost like everything I had is just gone. I know I will see you again one day. IG, I just hope that you will be proud of me. Until we meet again, goodbye dad, my hero. My best friend, I love you forever. From Marvel and Kyrie. I 
Yes. Please, please on. Keep on to the back.
I've always been told you won't be called until it's your time. I guess heaven was needing a hero. Somebody just like to stand up for what you believe and follow it through when I try to make it make sense in my mind the only conclusion I come to cause heaven was near I remember the last time I saw you Oh, you held your head up proud I laughed inside when I saw how you were Standing out in the crowd You're such a part of who I am And now the part will just be mine No matter how much I need you now Heaven needed you more Cause heaven was me Somebody just like you Brave enough to stand up For what you believe And follow it through When I try to make it make sense In my mind The only conclusion I come Heaven was need a hero like you. heaven was need a hero, and that's you.
gemacht. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. Benedict Lane Charles, known as Glenn, IG, and father by his kids, was born on November 26, 1962, to the late Phyllis and Hesby. And IG was the third of five children. As a child, IG was afraid of death. So when his mother died, IG was only 11 years old. He climbed a tree to see the funeral because his fear of not going was not allowing him to go closer. IG had a love for cricket and he was very good at it. He was the best open bowler cricket team of La Poetry could have. Leroy, his friend, was his open batsman. Wherever IG go, with his team, Leroy was sure to go. IG also enjoyed fishing with his father and he was a crab holder. And so when he became a father himself, he used all of his skill, which include making of straw mats and kites to feed his nine children. IG had loved people, especially his little sister, Karen, whom he took care of after his siblings had traveled in search of a better life. He was a very humble person, Anyone who known him will know that he had a love to dance and always arguing with his sister that he is the best dancer than all of them. Whenever someone passed by and called out IG, he was sure to respond, hey look, IG never liked bothering people. So even when he doesn't feel well, he always tried to keep calm and make those around him believe he was okay when he was not. IG will be missed by his entire family and friends. He is gone from our present, but he is forever in our hearts. Rest in perfect peace, IG, until we meet again. We all miss you and love you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Desian, for this short synopsis of the life of Benedict Lane, a.k.a. IG, Glenn, and father.
Charles of La Portree in St. Andrew. And with this, I want to welcome each and every one of you to Sacred Heart Church, Sacred Heart Catholic Church, Tivoli. Welcome those who are viewing this live via Zoom. Welcome to the funeral service in thanksgiving for the life of our dear brother, our dear father, uncle, cousin, and friend. On behalf of the parish priest, I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you to this thanksgiving service. But before we begin, I want to you to pay attention to the restrooms, which are on my right, which are on your left. You can still wear your mask, even though they have dropped the restrictions. I'm still wearing mine. You can still wear your mask for your own safety, and you can sanitize as well. So before we begin the service, I want to ask the family and friends to stand and go to stand next to the cops, to the casket, for the blessing and the reception of the body. Family members, you stand and you go down to the aisle to witness the reception and the blessing of the body. And at the same time, you can take your final view of your deceased loved one. So while Father is making his way for the reception and the blessing of the body, I ask the, family, the rest of the congregation to stand. Our entrance in today will be Blessed assurance is on the booklet that you have. And we would like everyone to participate in the same blessed assurance when the time comes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, the God of the God of our fathers, a gentle Savior and a kind God, who has called our brother Benedict Charles from this life to himself. We ask that the God of grace and peace may lead him to eternal Jerusalem through Christ our Lord. In the waters of baptism, our brother Benedict died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with, with him his eternal glory in thy kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is mine.
in my Savior, all the day long. My story, this is my song. Praise in my Savior, all the day long. for the opening prayer. Everyone, stand please. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. And welcome to this time, the funeral rite, the funeral service in honor of our brother, Benedict Charles, whom God has called from this world to himself. I just want to appeal to each and every one of us that we have come here to pray we have come to pray and prayer is addressed to god not to any human person so i invite you irrespective of your religion irrespective of your background let us be united in heart and mind to pray to god for the peaceful repose of our brother benedict at this time so I will I invite those of you who are standing outside, if you want a place to sit, please come inside the church. There are still seats by my right and by my left. So we bow our heads. I ask you to bow your heads and pray silently in your heart for our brother. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Benedict Charles, also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We come to the liturgy of the word where you hear the reading. And the reading is taken from the book of the Apocalypse, chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. This reading will be proclaimed by our sister, Cassidy Charles. Cassidy, welcome to the lectern to do the reading. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, as beautiful as a bride all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne, you see this city? Here God lives among men. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people, and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all the tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, and no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke. 
Now I am making the whole of, the, of creation new, he said. I will give water from the well of life, free to anybody who is thirsty. It is the rightful inheritance of the one who proves victorious, and I will be his God, and he a son to me. The word of the Lord. The choir will now lead us in the responsorial psalm. He lives, and we want everybody to join in the singing, please. It's on your booklet. for the gospel acclamation. Please stand. resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he was dead, yet he shall live. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with him with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, 
Where have you led him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind have done something so that this man would have not died? So Jesus Pet up again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone laid across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he has said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial hand bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had, what had been done began to believe in him the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ may we be seated again good afternoon friends in christ and welcome to this very moment normally on a day like this, in every funeral, I have two responsibilities uh, at this time, standing here. The first responsibility is to extend the church's condolence to the family. And then the second responsibility is to encourage ourselves, those of us who are still alive, to remind us that one day we become like Benedict. And for us to be like him, we must be ready. So I begin with the first responsibility. My sisters, my brothers, on behalf of the church, Sacred Heart Catholic Church, uh, this Sacred Heart Catholic Church is made up of four communities. Those of us who worship here in Tivoli, the community in Montrose, the community in Hermitage, and the community, community in Moya. These four communities form the Sacred Heart Parish. So on behalf of the four communities, we wish to say, accept our sympathy. Just know that it has happened, it has happened. There is nothing else we can do. The best we can do is what we are doing now, to pray for him that God will give him a place in the heavenly kingdom. As for you and the family, we pray that God will fortify you at this time, give you the strength and the courage to bear the loss. Uh, the one of the things you will do is to make sure that good legacies that he has left behind that you keep them up the bad ones you throw them away but the good ones you keep so on behalf of the church again i say accept our sympathy may god strengthen you through christ our lord and so and you my brothers and sisters those of us who have gathered to pay our last respect to our brother Benedict. Uh, he, he, you are here because you know him or because somehow, some, somewhere, you are connected to him. So, and because you know him or you are connected to him in one way or the other, that is why you are here. And you are here not just to um, watch a movie, but you are here to pray. And I know that many of us here don't go to any church. 
we only appear in churches if there is funeral. So I pray that you are going to church will not be only on funeral days. That a church is a community in where you establish a relationship with God and with the people of God who worship in that particular community. So there are some inspirations we should draw from the reading I gave you this afternoon. And that was the reading from the Gospel of St. John. And it tells the story of the resurrection, how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. How Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. There are so many um, situations surrounding that raising of Lazarus from the dead. The, the first one is that the, the burial system, you know, the burial system at that time. You know, in our time, we dig deep into the mother earth and we bury inside the earth. But at that time, they do not dig deep into the ground. They dig into the rock or into the caves. So it's just like coming to a place like this and outside there is a cave. Then you dig and dig deep inside the cave. And when you dig deep inside the cave, you will lay the dead body there and then use a stone to close it back. And that was the kind of funeral that Lazarus was given. The cave was dug, the, the rock was dug deep, and the body put inside. And then the, the, thing rolled, the stone rolled back. Now, when the time came, when this boy, this young man, Lazarus, was sick, the sisters, just like you and your sister, they sent a message to Jesus and told him that, look, your friend Lazarus is sick. Come and see him. Somehow, Jesus did not go immediately. Then after some time, Lazarus died. So they sent another message to Jesus and said, your friend Lazarus is dead. And when the apostles, when they received this message that Lazarus is dead, Lazarus happened to be somebody they know very well because they used to go to their home from time to time. And so when they got the message that Lazarus was dead, they didn't go immediately. They allowed some days to pass. Then after two or three days, Jesus called the apostles and said to them, Lazarus is asleep. Let us go and see him. And there was a dialogue there. Then the apostles looked at him and said, well, if he, if he is asleep, then he will wake up when the time comes. We don't need to go. Then, but he insisted that they should go. And that is how the gospel of today came about. And so they, they decided to go. And it was a journey of two and a half miles from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. And they made that journey. And when they reached the interesting thing is what I'm trying to point out here. Because it has something to do with each and every one of us. When Jesus and his companions were approaching Bethany, Martha left the house and went straight to meet Jesus halfway. And when he met Jesus on the way, he fell down to his feet and he said, this is what impressed me most. Master, if you were here, my brother would not have died. Master, if you were here, my brother would not have died. You know, at times, when we look at the death of some people, for instance, our brother Bernard is just 59 years. So, and you ask yourself, why didn't God give him more time? Why didn't God allow him to experience more years? We can ask so many whys, whys, whys. But that is not what is important. What is important right now is that he has left. He has started the journey. What next? 
And what next is what we are doing now. And when we have put him in the, gra in the grave and cover him and all go to our homes, what next? He will face God. It is a journey that nobody is going to make with you. No matter how your mom loves you, she will never make this journey with you. No matter how your auntie, how your sister loves you, they will never, ever make this journey with you. It is the journey you must make alone. And you must begin to ask yourself now, how are you getting ready to make this journey when the time comes? Because it is not a physical journey. It is a spiritual journey. From time to time, I make it very clear from here, whenever I conduct a funeral service like this, I say to the people, as I'm saying to you today, this journey is not a physical journey. It is a spiritual journey. And for you to make a spiritual journey, you must be prepared spir spiritually. For you to make a physical journey, you must prepare physically. For instance, if you are going from here, let's say to, to Trinidad by boat, if you are wise enough, you may prepare a little lunch box for yourself. So that if you get hungry, you will eat something. You should be able to take some water with you. That is physical preparation. And so if you are making a spiritual journey, what kind of preparation are you going to make? You will make a spiritual preparation. And that is what I am here to remind you, brothers and sisters. This journey that Benedict has started, we will all make it in one day. It's a question of when. It's a question of time. Everybody sitting in this house, in this church, this afternoon, all of us, starting from me to the last person there, we must one day enter this box and we must proceed on this spiritual journey to God. And the question is, what score card are you going to present before God? Are you, when you appear before God, are you going to show God the number of the bottles of beer you have consumed in a shop? Are you going to show God the number of the bottles of alcohol you have consumed? Are you going to show God the number of men or the number of women you have broken their hearts? because of your wayward way of life are you going to show god the report card of your lack of response to the things of god that on a sunday people are rushing to church you are sitting and lazing around is that the scorecard you are going to present is that the scorecard you are going to use to make this journey one thing interesting is that at times when people come to funerals, people will cry and shout on top of their voices. And you ask yourself, this person crying and shouting, when this person was alive, what did you do? How much love did you show? Or you just come to make a show of, a show of um, attraction. I keep telling people, it is not necessary to make a show of attraction, to cry and shout. Even the people of Israel, the Jewish people, they have that tradition. We call them hired mourners. Hired mourners at that time are people, you pay them. So if you, if you want your funeral to be big and to have people to cry, you hire them, we call them high, paid mourners. And their job is they will come and cry and cry and cry. So some of us, when we come to the house of God, we do like hired mourners. We cry as if we are paid to cry. You are not paid to cry. If there is any journey you are making with the dead person, you make it in the spirit. You make it in the spirit. Because what God sees 
is the heart, not the outward appearance. God sees the heart. And he knows, as each and every one of us sitting here, God knows those who are sincerely and truly praying for Benedict. God knows those who are sincerely and genuinely accompanied Benedict in his moments of need, in his moments of trial. God knows those who assisted him when he most needed them. God knows. Me and you may not know, but God knows. So we don't need to deceive ourselves. God knows who is who. And God knows the truth. The only scorecard we can present to God is what we have done right. I pray with you today, and I pray for Benedict, and I pray for the family, that God will help you to begin now to present a scorecard that will be acceptable in the sight of God through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to the intercessory prayers. Please stand. Dear brothers and sisters, friends in Christ, we come before God our Father to continue our prayers for our brother Benedict, that the good Lord who has called him, we give him strength. That the good Lord, we give strength to the family and support them at this very time. Let us pray for our brother Benedict Charles, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the family and friends of our brother Benedict Charles, who seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness of doubt that comes from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be grant that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. So we now turn to God. Our Father, in silent prayer, I ask you to pray in your heart for our brother Benedict, for the family he left behind, and for those who are sincerely mourning his departure. We call on our mother Mary to pray for us and with us as we say, Hail Mary, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Almighty and eternal God, look favorably on the prayers we have offered to you so that your departed servant, Benedict Charles, may be taken up into glory with your son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offering. And we now ask the children of the deceased to take up the offering for us, please. And this will be followed by the presentation of gifts. The collection hymn or the offering hymn is Because He Lives. The choir will lead us in that hymn.
We now come for, to the presentation of gifts and we ask the family members to join the procession to present the gifts. In thanksgiving, as symbols for the life of our dear brother, Benedict Lane Charles. We all stand, please. All members of the congregation, please stand for the presentation of gifts.
Please be seated for the meditation. We now have an, an expression of appreciation by one of the family members. Please come forward. Hi, good afternoon. So we just wanted to say thank you for everybody coming out to just celebrate IG today. This would be his last day, his resting day. And we just want to thank everyone that came out out of their busy schedule to take the time to come to celebrate the last day with us. Thank you. Let's all stand now for the final commendation and farewell and closing prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, friends in Christ, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Benedict. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Your response is receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Respond. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of God. Respond. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Respond. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him forever. Respond. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother, Benedict Charles, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon Benedict in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May the soul of Benedict and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Benedict, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem, through Christ our Lord. Let us now take our brother to his final resting place, but we do that in order, please. The priest follows by our brother's cops, the family members, and then the rest of the congregation. Thank you very much. Let us show respect for our brother.
Then fall in Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, 
To organize our from you, but <laughs> kind of wanted to stay behind the horse. You want to stay behind it? Yeah, that is like all those because I'm streaming live on YouTube. She will follow it too. Yeah. The only thing like you don't want to follow it too far. Yeah. Day hey boy, I just live in the, the, the grounds in Tivoli. Yeah. Right. Yes. Hold on, Robbie. Huh? Hold on. You want the priest to go in front? Oh shit. The priest behind me? Yeah. But you want to go behind this? Yeah, yeah, you go just pull back. <laughs> yeah, Robbie, sorry about that. I want to stay behind you. I want to stay behind you. Take a rabbi again. The priest gone? No, he yeah, didn't move yet. Well, let the probably. priest go. Yeah, yeah. We can see me. Yeah, right, Robbie. Yeah. Okay, go here. Uh -huh. So. Mm. 
But why did you all took? Why, why they took? Sanchez. Yes. Yep. Yep. Good news. Come. 
like it. I 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 like it. Everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Busy signal. <laughs> Just lift your hands with lift your hands and give praises. Sorry, sorry. <laughs>
Dear friends in Christ, we come to the final resting place of our brother, 
let us now call on the name of the Lord our God to bless this grave in which our brother Benedict will be buried. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by the three days you lay in the tomb, you made holy the graves of all who believe in you. And even though their bodies lie in the earth, the cross that day like you will rise again. Give our brother Benedict peaceful rest in this grave until that day when you, the resurrection and the life, will, rise, will raise him up in glory. Then may he see the light of your presence, Lord Jesus, in the kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Since Almighty God has called our brother Benedict from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth from which it was taken. Christ was the first to rise from the dead. And we know that he will raise up our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. We commend our brother Benedict to the Lord. May the Lord receive him into his peace and raise him up and raise his body on the last day. Your response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Respond. Lord, hear our prayer. Brothers and sisters, let us pray for our brother, Benedict, to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. The man who believes in me will live, even if he dies. And every living person who puts faith in me will never suffer eternal death. Benedict was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, you wept at the death of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to the Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give our brother eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. You promised paradise to the chief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord our brother was washed clean in baptism and anointed with the oil of salvation. Give him fellowship with all your saints in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our brother Benedict. Let our brother be our consolation and eternal life, our hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord our Lord father... Stand up with Stand up. Tell Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The past. Holy Ghost. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Ashes Give me. Those who does who don't know, do know. Those who does. Benedict, you are dust, yes, dust. and that are dust who to come to Christ our Lord. Amen. Close the gate. Close the gate. Um, the natural, the artificial reeds. Family members who like to place a reef in the tomb, you can do so. You can put the artificial one.
Captain Bring this lab, bring this lab. Where is it? Where is it? You know how the walk is? <laughs> Focus! <laughs> <laughs> What's your shirt now, everybody? Oh, you now watch me. No, just move that one day. Swell, swell. Can go, can go the way you have to go. You have to turn, because that side flat, it's swell. So put it on the flat side, yeah, correct, correct. Yep. Right. 
Oh, oh, bisa ini.
Whatever wrong he may have done. By his Christian faith, he was united with all your believing people. Now, in your love and mercy, give him a place with all your saints. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you. 
Right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Bleezer Shuffle and Carissa. Um, 
I just want to say to the family members who couldn't be here in person, but you're here via the live stream, I just want to say condolences to you. And, um, Hands by to me. By the way, I just want to say condolences to the family. And don't worry, you always see my room. So to everyone on the live, I just want to say have a blessed evening. And big up on yourself. And this is where the live stream of the late Benedict Lane Charles will come to an end. Bless evening later.